Right. No, I, I 100% agree with you. I also would um, challenge politicians. I think we have had a long tradition, started with Daly and maybe even before him, of addressing a blighted area by seeking investment, but also gentrification. So mm -hmm. it isn't that we're uplifting the South Loop when I was a kid. It wasn't a, nice, a very nice area to go into, right? It didn't have $3,000 condos, right? $3,000 a month rents. You didn't go there. Now, why did people go there? Because they didn't, when that got, that community changed, it didn't change for the residents that were there. They mm -hmm. left. So right. all you've done is destabilize them. They move into communities, they don't know anyone. There's less community cohesion. And that just keeps happening and happening and happening. And that, that you're, you're basically dooming those communities that are left. That's right, that's right. They, they do nothing to protect the existing uh, residents, those residents on fixed income, low income residents, or for that matter, uh, seniors. They don't look. I mean, there was a strategy. I remember when I was city budget director, I mean, I felt that the city's strategy was, particularly when it came to the CHA, you know, and this man on the CHA, was to move poor people, force poor people to the suburbs. It was really interesting because it had a, an effect of uh, turning uh, uh, a, the suburban suburban districts that that had been you know not exclusively Democrat uh, Democrat, and so the city was getting rid of its poor people, and and more and more suburban districts that at one time had vote, voted Republican were suddenly voting uh, voting Democrat. But but the net effect was the destabilizing of those communities created conditions that that did not help the schools get better, and they also created conditions. Uh, 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 the, their failure to address the 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 uh, you know the the lack of quality schools, the lack of jobs, the lack of economic opportunities, obviously higher crime. You know that in turn has uh, and, and inadequate schools has driven driven the middle class out of those communities. So you have communities now that are. I, I mean, when you go to the Rosen community, half the men are in some phases of the criminal justice system. I mean, you know, this isn't me speaking. This is people from the community telling me that. I mean, you have widespread unemployment. You have generational unemployment. The city simply hasn't made the investments. And uh, despite in the Rosen community in particular, Alden Beal working night and day to advance and to bring investment to the community. And he's had a lot of success doing that, unfortunately. Look, and it's just not, it's just not predominantly minority wards. Look at the Hevelish. I mean, look at the far south side, you know? I mean, we're still waiting for them to clean up the mess left by all the industry that's vacated. I mean, there's a life expectancy difference in this city that's as great as 30 years. In certain communities, the life expectancy is the, in, you know, is, is, is like in the early six, in, in your early 60s. In, uh, in other communities, it's in your late 80s. This is like the difference between the life expectancy in Germany and in Russia. I mean, so, so that, what does that tell you? It, it's just not, those numbers are, 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 you know, it's, it's less because there's a spike in violence and more because people are living in unhealthy communities. You know, they're, the food deserts, uh, pollutions, lead in the water, uh, uh, manganese in the soil and things like that. So, and the city hasn't done anything to invest despite the fact that there are now diverting close to 900 over 900 million dollars a year in our property taxes for development that is going to do virtually nothing to help these poor long neglected generational neglected communities unfortunately yeah i i um yes um i remember going to alderman beale's office in his ward some years ago when we were talking to him mm -hmm. about police board reform when he was head of the police and fire for a short period of time and you ride around and you just see some of it looks like prairie right because <laughs> everything's been knocked down and mm -hmm. what is standing is just one uh desolate remnants of a factory after another after another after more prairie and it's like it would be to me i had never really been in in, in detroit but what you hear of detroit and what yep. it conjures in your mind you think like oh wow this must be how yep. detroit looks Yes. And at the same time, you're looking at a city that's got cranes all over the place in the loop and in right. the South Loop. And even though I have my issues with Alderman Fioretti at the moment, or former <laughs> Alderman Fioretti, um, over a whole range of issues, when he first ran, he said he talked to construction people in his ward because he walked the entire ward. 
And every time he went to talk to them, none of them lived in the city. Yeah. And to me, I, I always took that as, wow. And I asked him, how much of that is TIF money? He goes, all these projects are TIF. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, why are we paying for people to drive off from Kankakee well, to work? If we're going to use city money to subsidize right. these things, they ought to employ Chicago people. Well, you know, during the campaign, I, uh, you know, I did a series of issue papers that I put out. And you know the joke, I think Cash says, every time Dallas opens his mouth, a white paper comes out. Yes, guilty as charged. And if you see my Facebook posts, obviously there's no one editing me for length. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen them. Whatever, it is what it is. But the point is, uh, I, I talked at length about, you know, when we were in the Chicago Public Schools, uh, because the schools were on the, the verge of collapse, when I became superintendent, I almost had like unilateral authority over the schools. I had a supportive board. I worked very closely with Gary Chico. So when we did our school construction program, we opened 78 buildings and renovated 350. And 90% of them were in the poorest communities. So we went into every poor community, tore down the prefab schools, and replaced them with brick and mortar schools. And in Roseland, a community where I grew up, I went to Curtis and then Fender High School before we moved. Uh, I bought the 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 soon to be abandoned Mendel or St. Martin de Porres 40 acre campus and I built Southside College Prep. I mean, up until mm -hmm. when Beale became alderman, that was probably the only investment in that community in 30 or 40 years. And, and, and I remember, I mean, Michigan Avenue was like, a, was like an outdoor shopping mall. I mean, you had everything on Michigan Avenue. Um, what do you have on Michigan Avenue now? I mean, burnt out stores or maybe, you know, um, maybe a couple fast food places. And I mean, it's a, it, it's a desolate, you have, and it's just what, 10 miles away from, from the, uh, from the Gold Coast or, or, you know, the Gold Coast, which unfortunately has been under siege. But at the end of the day, clearly the city has simply not made the effort to invest in the communities. And it does not have to be that way. You know, if the city wanted to right now, they could go out, issue bonds, amortize the interest and finance those bonds with, TIF revenues that will be come available, re property tax revenues that will come available when the, when the existing TIF districts expire. And they could raise billions of dollars that they could use to do environmental cleanup, to get lead out of the water, to do affordable housing, to go in and to basically do the streetscaping, to provide the infrastructure supports, to encourage real investments in those communities. But there's both a combination of lack of imagination and lack of will. So unfortunately, I don't see any deviation. I, I don't see any dramatic TIF reforms. Do you? Lincoln Yards is still full, full speed ahead. I mean, I don't see any TIF fair sharing. You know, the mayor has an initiative that purports to put $750 million into the south sides and west sides. But what they don't tell you is about half, half about two thirds of that money was stuff that Rahm Emanuel already planned. And it includes the big uh, uh, infrastructure investments uh, and, um, uh, on the transportation investments that the CTA was planning on uh, undertaking. And, and I'm not suggesting that she, she and the city council are not motivated to do something, but what they need to do is, is they need to do something dramatic. And I just don't see the sacred cows like TIFFs and, and programs like that being touched. You know, they're almost sacrosanct. It's almost as if the mayor's office wants to continue to control close to a billion dollars that they can determine how that money is allocated on an annual basis, almost independent from serious, serious, deep down city council review. And unfortunately, uh, the neighborhoods that are most in need are going to continue to be most neglected.